Hello everyone, my name is Mad Radio DXA UK and I want to welcome you to this tutorial video on how to flash your TEF6686 second revision to the 2.0 beta firmware. Now, just uh, a warning, um, there might be a possibility you would brick uh, or render useless your TEF6686, but the number of times I flashed this, I haven't uh, bricked um, the, you know, I haven't bricked my radio and I haven't heard of any cases of people brick, you know, bricking or rendering useless their TEF6686, but I have to give a warning. So what it is, is that I've been asked to do a, a tutorial video on flashing the firmware to 2.0 to the 2.0 beta um, and uh, what I've done even though I flashed this anyway to 2.0 beta my, uh, my own radio I've put it back to 1.21 for the purpose of this video so let me just uh, switch this on all right and it's got the 1.2 it's got the 1.21 uh, version back again okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our computer now and we're going to um, get the necessary files needed to flash our TEF 6686 okay so on the software side we need Windows 10 um, and a PC of course um, now Windows 11 will, will most likely work um, I suppose other versions of Windows will work too. I'm not so sure about uh, Linux users because I don't really use Linux. I'm mostly a Windows 10 user. We'll also need uh, WinRAR installed on our PC. Um, I'm not going to show you how to install it because um, WinRAR can be easily obtained um, and there's instructions, very easy instructions that can be found on the internet. We'll also need to install Discord so we can join the TEF group and download the beta firmware from there. Again, I'm not going to show the installation for Discord because it's probably going to reveal my password and so on. Um, so uh, I'll leave that up to you. What we need uh, next is the CH340 driver. Now, this driver, what it does is, is uh, it, that it uh, enables serial port functionality on a USB port. Now, don't worry if you think that your USB port functionality is going to be lost forever when you install this driver. No, all it does, it just gives that extra functionality for your US, uh, for your USB port to act like a serial port. And then the last thing we need on the software side is our TEF 2.0 beta firmware. On the hardware side, what we need is a good quality USB cable uh, that is a Type A to Type C, the type that can be found, for example, on modern uh, Samsung smartphones. Now, um, do be careful when using um, these type of cables because if you use the cheap quality cables that can be found on a well-known auction website, they are known to lack the data wire inside the cable for data transfers, meaning that yes it's only you know when you connect it to your device yes it will charge the device but you won't be able to do any data transfers and therefore uh, passing over the firmware from the computer uh, or the pc over to your radio the tef is not going to happen i recommend using something from let's say samsung an official samsung product or what i'm uh, going to use which is the cable that came with my uh, sony playstation console um, that is used for charging um, the uh, uh, the sony controller but can also do data transfers as well uh, when needed and the last thing we need is a thin screwdriver something like a watchmaker's or glasses repair kit a screwdriver thin enough so we can access um, the uh, boot mode button that's inside um, the earphone or headphone socket of the TEF6686 and I will show you that how to access that in a moment so I'm showing um, sort of like uh, a rough location of where the boot button is on the uh, or inside the uh, TEF6686 which we have to access through the headphone socket now like I said a thin screwdriver is needed um, and the button itself um, when you uh, use the thin scry uh, screwdriver to push that button it's very similar um, type of small button like for example on some devices where you have to use also use a thin screwdriver to uh, reset um, device and you do that by pushing a very very small button um, in that uh, device and this TEF6686 it's uh, a similar sort of, uh, sort of thing as well but like I said it's inside the TEF6686 but the good thing is we don't have to open up the TEF6686 to access the uh, boot button we just have to put that thin screwdriver inside inside the uh, headphone socket 
Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to download our CH340 driver, uh, like I said, so that our USB port can also act like a serial port. So just go into Google, type in CH340 driver, press enter, and the one that I recommend um, to download is from this website, the Arduin website. I'll leave a link in the description below. We go in here, and then we've got a link here to download the driver. So what we'll do is we just click on that, just uh, get rid of that. Okay, and there we are, we've downloaded the uh, file. So once we've uh, downloaded the uh, file or the WinRAR file that contains the CH340 driver, what we want to do is uh, we want to go to our downloads folder or wherever you've downloaded the, uh, the file and uh, we want to bring it to desktop. Okay, so we'll do that to make it much easier, minimize the uh, downloads window. And then I'm going to right click on desktop here, click on folder and we're going to create a new folder and to make it easy I'm just going to type in CH340 there we go all right so the next thing we want to do is we want to double click on our Winwar file which has the uh, CH340 driver we're going to select everything here except the top uh, the top folder and we're going to extract it uh, all the files to the CH340 folder on our desktop the one we just created so there we go it's all done exit the WinRAR file, double click on the CH340 folder, and there we are. Okay, so the next step we've got um, we've got to do is we have to go into uh, setup. So the next step we want uh, to do here is we want to click on install so we can um, install our CH340 driver. So we click on install, it might take a little while to do, and there we go. The drive is successfully pre-installed in advance, okay? What I rec recommend you do after you install this, exit this, right, and restart your PC so the drivers can install properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart my PC and um, we're going to carry on the process of uh, flashing the firmware on our TEF. So the next thing we need to do after we've downloaded the CH340 driver is we need to download the 2.0 beta firmware. So what we need to do is um, we need to join the TEF6686 Discord group. Now I'll leave a link in the description below um, of the page where you can access the um, TEF Discord group. Um, so what it is, you just obviously you've got to have uh, Discord installed first, and then what you do is you just click here um, in this um, banner you see here, right? Just click there and then you're in the Discord group. I've already joined anyway. So what I'll do is I'm just going to enlarge this. And what you have to do is you have to go into, on the second um, left-hand side uh, tab here, list of um, um, links here, you have to go into ESP32 hyphen beta hyphen releases. That's where you'll find um, the 2.0 beta firmwares. Now, um, there is the latest firmware which is from the 17th of August 2023 but uh, what it is is I found the RDS decoding a bit too slow for my liking. Um, I'm going for the one that I've downloaded and I've installed is the one from the 10th of August. That one is, a, is a reportedly to have the fastest um, RDS decoding uh, so far and I'd like to thank Peter on the Skyros DX group for recommending me this version which uh, does work great. So what we do is we're going to download it, just click here where it says TF6686 uh, ESP32 Dave Beta dot zip, left mouse button there, you'll get a warning, just continue to download. And it should be downloaded already. Yes, there it is. So our file, our 2.0 beta firmware file has been downloaded. And I'm just showing you the uh, hardware required here, which I'm going to use. Um, it's, like I said, a thin uh, screwdriver here, which um, I've obtained from this, which is a precision screwdriver and glasses repair kit. This I got from my lo uh, local supermarket. You can easily get it on the, on the internet. And this is a good quality USB cable. This is the one that came with my Sony uh, PlayStation console. Like I said, um, the Type A here, which is the one that goes to your PC. And this one here, 
which is the Type-C that goes into your TEF radio. You can also use, for example, um, the Samsung charging cables um, that uh, are used on modern Samsung uh, smartphones. So once we've downloaded the uh, necessary files to uh, flash our TEF radio to the 2.0 beta firmware, the next thing we want to do is we want to connect our TEF radio to our computer. So what we want to do is we want to get our good quality USB cable and the type A goes obviously goes into our computer so I'm just going to connect that now. Okay, So that's connected to our computer and the next thing is our type C connection goes into the TEF radio. Now when we connect it in the outer part of the TEF will light up. I don't know if you can see a light that comes on. There we go. There's a light on now. That means that our TEF is connected to our PC and that's what we want to see. Okay, so with that, the next uh, thing we want to do is we want to get our thin screwdriver, okay, and we want to access the boot button that's inside the headphone socket in here. Now, more or less the position of the boot button inside the headphone socket is sort of like in the center, right? So what we want to do is very gently, we want to put the thin screwdriver in here and we should feel a little click, okay? Don't know if you can hear it. All right, so that means that when you hear that click, the boot button is pressed. Now, what we want to do here is we want to uh, start this radio, switch this radio on in boot mode, All right? So with the radio off, we put in the screwdriver inside here, okay? press that button inside to go into boot mode and then we're going to switch the radio on All right and as you can see there's nothing on the display it's a black display that means that the radio is in boot mode so what we can do is we can let go of the boot button with our screwdriver right and we leave our radio on do not turn the radio off all right because this is absolutely necessary to flash the firmware onto our TF radio so now that we know that our radio is in boot mode, like I said, with the display, with no display on our screen, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back into our computer and we're going to flash the firmware onto our TEF radio. So we're back on our PC or computer here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the location uh, of where we downloaded our 2.0 beta firmware version. And what we need to do is double click on the WinRAR file of the 2.0 uh, beta firmware and we're going to extract the folder that's here onto our desktop okay we can exit the WinRAR file we'll exit our downloads window and what we're going to do next is we're going to open our folder that uh, contains the uh, the firmware files now the other thing you need to do next is you need to find out um, the port number of uh, where your TEF radio is connected. How do you do this? No problem. What we'll do is we'll go to the bottom left, put our pointer on the bottom left screen where the Windows icon is, and we're going to type DEV, short for Device Manager. Okay, as you can see, it's just come out there, or you might have to type in the full thing, Device Manager itself, but it's there available already. We click on this, okay, click on Device Manager, and the next thing we need to find here is something called Ports and in brackets com c o m and l p t that's going to tell us the uh, serial port number that we'll need for when the we're going to flash our beta 2.0 beta firmware okay so in order to find that out you click on the arrow pointing to the right here next to where it says ports and i know for a fact this is the one that um, is uh, for the tef radio right usb serial ch340 com 6 right if uh, you have a few of these uh, appear more than one and you don't know which one it is what i recommend is disconnecting the uh, the tef 6686 but do so um, where it's connected on the computer side not on the tef 6686 radio okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to disconnect it from the usb port of my computer right and there you go look it's disappeared right that means it's you know the our TEF is not connect, uh, connected to our computer. I'm going to connect it back. Okay. So give it a moment to appear, and there we go. So I know for a fact the number that we'll need to enter um, to flash 
our uh, firmware 2.0 uh, firmware onto our TF, TEF radio is going to be number six, as in you know COM6 that it says here. Okay, so what we what we're going to do next is uh, well we connect to device manager now. We know it's number six. We click on here flash the flash file. Double click on that, and then it asks you to enter a COM port number. Okay, so remember what I said. It's number six on our device with. Uh, with your cells, it could be different. It could be, I don't know, number four, number five, eight, etc. So that's why it's very important to find out which uh, port number um, your TEF is on your computer once you've, you know, you connected your TEF radio to your computer. So I know that it's number six. Type in number six. I'm going to press enter. And when you see all this, that means that the um, the process of flashing the firmware, the 2.0 firmware, onto your TEF is happening. So give it a little while. It usually takes less uh, than a minute for for this uh, to happen. Okay. So everything is looking good, and there we go. That's the process finished already. Once you see leaving at the bottom of the screen there, it says leaving hard resetting via RTS pin. Press any key to continue. So I'm just going to press the enter button. And uh, that's it, the process of uh, flashing our um, 2.0 firmware onto our TEF radio is complete. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our TEF radio and see how, you know, how our uh, radio is looking now. And hopefully the 2.0 firmware is installed in it already. Okay, so uh, once uh, this is done, the uh, flashing the firmware onto the TEF radio, what we can do is we can switch off the radio here and we disconnect the USB cable going into our TEF. Okay, and what we're going to do next is we're going to switch on the radio and see what happens. There we go, 2.0 there already installed. And then what it asks you to do is to restart the tuner. So all you do is just switch off the radio and you switch it back on. There we go, 2.0 installed already. And there we are. The radio is working as normal. I'm just going to tune into a station. Hang on a second. Do we think this is over? Game over for the Bongo family? Or there we go. And there, look, our TEF radio well, is working normally. Kind of and of course, the great back. thing about this uh, 2.0 firmware. Let me just but, press this here to access the menu. Look, lots of lots more options, lots more stuff and features to play around with on uh, on our TEF uh, radio. Yep, and you can even get more, uh, for example, RDS data by pressing the lower button for a little while for about two seconds. And that's, you know, this is why I really like the 2.0 beta firmware version. Gives you more RDS data, but like I said, gives you a lot more features to use, um, you know, compared to the firmware one versions of, uh, you know, for the uh, TEF6686. Uh, so I hope that um, you found this uh, tutorial helpful and that you have successfully uh, managed to um, flash the firmware of your TEF radio to the 2.0 beta version. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments how it's uh, everything's got on with you and if you like the 2.0 beta firmware. 73 is to all and I'll see you in the uh, next video. Take care.